So you should have a worksheet like this. If you do, please take your scissors and without stabbing yourself or anyone else, cut around the edge of this foldable. Okay. So this is what you have left, yes? Now what should we do with these? Oh, absolutely, we should put them in the trash. Good job. I'm sorry, I made you nervous all of a sudden. We, didn't, we do not need those. We will put those in the trash. Okay? You don't have to do it right this second. You can do it in a minute. Because we still have more stuff to do on the foldable, right? Okay. So next we need to fold. Okay, now it matters where you fold, it matters what order we fold in, so be careful. I'm going to turn this over and fold right here on this dotted line. Do you see that dotted line? Yeah? The dotted means we're folding there. Okay? So I folded it backwards because, it, like I said, it matters what order we fold it in. And then I'm going to fold it over to the other, to the next fold, the next dotted line. I'm going to fold it back on this dotted line. And I'm going to fold it over one more time to the edge. So if I open mine up, it looks like that. Does yours look similar? Yeah? Okay. This is the part I'm nervous about. We're cutting again. Okay. But I'm only going to take these two parts to hold together. Okay. See how this, the graph part is just hanging off by itself? Leave it. Leave it hanging off by itself and cut along these lines. And up that line. So see how it is now? It's still all one one piece, right? It's still one page because of the graph part, but these are all separate. Does that make sense? Did you do it right? Uh, yes, but not including the graph page. Yes. Yeah, it's right. See, this isn't cut. This is still together. Yes, like that. Got it? We good? Everybody hold theirs up so I can see it. Not quite yet. Okay, good, 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 good. Not quite yet. Good, good, good. Good. Can you help her? Nope. Wrong way. Can you help him? Can you help him? Thank you. She'll help you. It's okay. No, it's okay. Yeah. Yes. They're not connected at here. They're connected at the graph. Okay. Yes. Okay, are we good? Almost. All right. 
Well, if we're almost ready, we can get almost ready. We can do the first thing. What's the first thing we're going to do? Write your name on it. So turn it over on the back and write your name on it, please. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see what we are writing. We are going to start on standard form, for the record, okay? We're starting on standard form. Now, before I open it at all, I want to write the formula for standard form on the front part. So I want f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, just to give you guys a heads up, both with Cisco and with Hardin-Simmons, this is actually called general form. Just figuring out different definitions. Okay. In our textbook, in our stuff, it's called standard form. Okay. Okay, you got it? Let's learn some stuff about standard form then. So let's open us up all the standard form stuff. Okay. Now we're actually going to start with vertex. Okay. The vertex of standard form, the x coordinate of the vertex, is negative b over 2a. Okay? The x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Now, the rest of what I'm going to write is going to look messy, and I don't want you to freak out. I'm going to write it, I want you to write it, and then I will make sure you understand it before we go on, okay? The y coordinate of the vertex is f of negative b over 2a. Well, what, that, what the heck does that mean? I'm going to take this. I'm going to take x. And I'm going to substitute it. Into the equation. to get y. Isn't that what it means to have f of something? If I ask for f of 2, we're just going to take 2 and plug it in, right? That's all this means. It just looks messy. The notation looks messy. But you are way smarter than the notation, aren't you? Say yes. yes. Okay, there you go. But here's what's cool about the axis of symmetry. If this is the vertex, where's the axis of symmetry going to pass through? Okay, so can I take a timeout commercial break real quick? Okay, if I'm taking a timeout commercial break real quick, I want to remind you what a parabola looks like. What's it look like? Like that? What's this? Vertex. What is that? Um, it is an axis. What did this axis just do to the parabola? I just cut it in half. So this is the axis of symmetry. Yes? So the axis of symmetry is always going to pass through the Oh, the vertex, okay? So the axis of symmetry is going to pass through the vertex. So here's the deal about it. If this is the vertex, then the axis of symmetry is this. Does that look familiar? Oh, yeah, because it's right there, right?
So once I know the x coordinate of the ax of the vertex, don't I also know the axis of symmetry? Yes? Okay. Any questions about that? Now, right now all I'm doing is giving you formulas so we could have our, our foldable filled out. I will give you examples in a minute, so if, if things are not quite clicking, give yourself a break and let's let's get to the examples and then we'll go from there. Is that okay? Okay. Now, in miscellaneous, what we want to write for miscellaneous is that we can very, very easily see the y-intercept in standard form. It's right here. The y-intercept is 0c. That's nice, isn't it? And for the graph, I'm going to draw a y-axis and an x-axis. And then we're going to have our parabola go right here. So what is this point? That's the vertex. What is this? Axis of symmetry. And what is this point right here? That's the y-intercept, isn't it? Okay. Now, why did I draw the y-intercept here on this one? Yeah, we can see it from the equation, can't we? Okay. That's definitely something we can see from the equation. So that's why I purposely drew it on this graph. Okay. Any questions about standard form? I understand you might have questions in the application of it, but do you have any questions about what we've written down so far? Okay, we good? All right, let's fold up standard form and let's look at vertex form. Okay. I'm using different colors, so if you if you want to use different colors, if that helps you, please go ahead. Okay. So vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. a times x minus h squared plus k. Now what do you notice about what's in the formula right here? Part of the formula is a subtraction sign. Okay, so if this said x minus 2, what is the value of h? Is it negative 2 or is it positive 2? It is positive 2, isn't it? Because x minus 2, x minus is part of the formula, so the value of h is 2. What if this said x plus 2? What would be the value of h? Negative 2. Because in order for it to say x minus, which is the formula, if it said x plus 2, I'd have to write x minus a negative 2. So the value of h would be negative 2. Okay? So let's open up vertex form. Let's talk about the vertex. Guess where the vertex is? Do you remember? Now, we talked about it at the very, 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 very beginning of the year. That's why I just reminded you. Oh, that's okay. But using context clues, like maybe this one, if this is my vertex, where's my axis of symmetry? X equals H. Now, I did hear someone say H. But I need you to remember that the axis of symmetry is a line, so we have to call it its name, which is a line, which is x equals h, not just h, because h is just a number, right? Okay. All right, miscellaneous. We don't have any miscellaneous, so we're just trying a penguin. How did I do it? I'm an amazing artist. Can't you see? Curve the top for the head. 
curve the back, make the beak, draw the belly, attach it to the back, draw the stomach, draw the feet, draw eye. We good? Let's look at the graph. Oops, yeah, that's what I want to do. What point is that? Vertex. And what is this? Now, how come we didn't put um, a y-intercept on this graph? Is that something we can see from this formula? It's not, is it? We didn't have any miscellaneous this time, right? So it's not something we can see, so we don't want to draw it on our graph. It's there. We could eventually find it, right? But not directly from the, God bless you, from the given formula. Okay? All right, ready for the last one? Okay, so fold up vertex form, and let's look at intercept form. Y equals A times X minus P times X minus Q. Seriously, A times X minus P times X minus Q. Got it? Okay. This time we're going to start with the graph. Why? Because we can. So what should we draw on this graph? How about a vertex? How about a axis of symmetry? Yeah. Now you're not wrong by calling it a line of symmetry. I promise you're not. Axis of symmetry, line of symmetry. We're also going to mark these two points. Why are we going to mark those two points? Those are the x-intercepts. What's this one called? Intercept form. So guess which intercepts we're talking about? Our x-intercepts. Okay. So let's go one space back then and talk about our miscellaneous while we're here. Okay. And let's talk specifically about our x-intercepts. What are our x-intercepts? Well, looking at the equation, what do you think our x-intercepts are going to be? P, 0, and Q, 0. Exactly right. Okay. Let's look at our vertex. How do you think we're going to find our vertex if I know my intercepts? Where's my vertex in relation to my intercepts? In the middle. So what if I took P and Q and divided them by 2? What am I doing with P and Q if I divide it by 2? I'm trying to find the average of it, right? Does it make sense to find the average if, if I know that my vertex is right in between the two intercepts? So what do you think the y-coordinate of the vertex is? F of P plus Q over 2. Once again, just like in standard form, we're going to have to plug 
this in to the function and to find the value. Does that make sense? So take x. Substitute it into the equation to find y. You okay with that? So if this is my vertex, where is my axis of symmetry? x equals what? Plus q over 2. Absolutely, right? Same pattern as the other two. Make sure you've seen the pattern. What's the x-coordinate of the vertex? What's the x-coordinate of the vertex? What's the x-coordinate of the vertex? Do you see that the x-coordinate of the vertex is the axis of symmetry? Yes? Okay. Now, I need to be very clear about something. Look at all the graphs that I drew. Which way are they opening? Up and down, right? This one's opening up, this one's opening up, this one's opening down. Uh, what I need you to understand is that when we start studying parabolas, which is what we're starting today, when we start, start studying quadratics, we are only dealing with functional parabolas functional quadratics only quadratics and parabolas that are functions which means they have to only open up or down can parabolas open left and right yes can parabolas open to the side like diagonal yes they can we are not talking about those yet give us give us some time this is only for parabolas that open up or down which is why all these say x equals x equals x equals okay now, I do want to add one more thing to both vertex form and intercept form right here with the axis of symmetry, okay? I want to put a star right here, and I want to say, be careful of the signs. Why do I want to be careful of the signs? If this says x minus 2, what's the value of p? Just 2 two, right? Because the minus is in the formula, okay? Which means right here for vertex form, I want to write the same thing. Be careful of signs for the same reason, which means I want to put a star right here, and I want to put a star right here, and I want to put a star right here, because I need to be careful in all, th all of those um, sections, okay? Do you have any questions so far? Then let us please use our foldable to actually do some examples. You want to do that? Okay. So let's start with this example right here. I'm going to move my foldable over. I want to say f of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 3, and I would like you to be able to tell me the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Are you okay if I just write that for axis of symmetry? Yes? Okay. <clears throat> so what form is this in? Is it? This is vertex form, isn't it? X minus h squared plus k. So let's look at this. How are we going to find the vertex? It's h, k, right? Well, what's h? 2. And what's k? 3. Done. What's the axis of symmetry if it's in vertex form? x equals h. So, x equals 2. And then we're done with that example. Okay, so far? What if it said f of x equals 
4 times x plus 5 squared minus 6. Can you tell me the vertex and the axis of symmetry? So what form is it in? Vertex form, so we're using this one again. X minus H. Where's H? X minus H. So what's H? Negative 5. And then K. Minus 6. Now guys, what does the 4 do? The 4 changes the shape of the parabola, right? It doesn't affect the vertex though. The vertex is only H, K. The A doesn't come into play for us right there. Do you see that? Okay. What's the axis of symmetry? X equals negative 5. Yes? Okay. What if I said F of X equals 2 times X minus 4 times X plus 8? I need the vertex and the axis of symmetry. What are we using? Intercept form, okay. So for intercept, I have to say, for the vertex, I have to say P plus Q over two. Well, what's P? What's P? Four, and what's Q? Negative eight, right? Because remember, the minus is in the formula. So to find P, it's just that, and to find Q, it's the same as X minus a negative 8, right? Okay, and I have to divide that by 2, right? What is 4 plus negative 8? Negative 4 divided by 2 is what? Negative 2. So the X coordinate of the vertex is negative 2. How do I find the Y coordinate of the vertex? Take the X, substitute it into the equation to find Y. I have to take the x, negative 2, and substitute it into this equation, right? So I have 2 times, what is negative 2 minus 4? Negative 6, and then what's negative 2 plus 8? 6. What's negative 6 times 6? Negative 36 times 2? Negative 72. And what's my axis of symmetry? X equals negative 2. Now that we're actually applying what we learned on our foldable, are you having any questions so far? Okay. A couple more examples, is that right? Okay. F of X equals X squared minus 4X plus 5. Vertex, axis of symmetry. What form is this? Standard form, okay. Standard form says to find my vertex, I got to use negative B over 2A for the X coordinate. So negative B would be 4 over 2 times A, which is 1, right? Uh, what's 4 divided by 2? So the X coordinate of my vertex is 2. Can we go out of order for a second? Don't I also know my axis of symmetry already? X equals 2, right? Now let's find the Y coordinate of my vertex. How do, how do I do that? Same, same way I just did the previous example, right? Take the X, substitute it into the equation to find the Y. So I have 2 squared, 4, minus 4 times 2. So 8, and then plus 5. What's 4 minus 8? Negative 4 plus 5? Done.
Now, you know we got to go a little bit crazy on our last example, right? Okay, f of x equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 7. Let's start off with what we are comfortable with first of all, vertex and axis of symmetry. Still negative b over 2a because it's still standard form, right? Okay, negative b, which would be negative 8 over 2 times, what's a? Negative 1, right? So what's negative 8 divided by negative 2? 4. Can I sneak down here and write my axis of symmetry? x equals 4. Okay. Negative, okay, well it's 4 squared. So negative 16. What is 4 times 8? 32. So negative 16 plus 32. 16 minus 7. So my vertex is 4, 9. Everybody okay with that? But here's what else it's going to ask you. Okay? Some of the stuff we talked about at the beginning of the year, and when I say beginning of the year, I mean like the second day of school. Okay? So can I remind you of some of the stuff it's going to ask you about? It wants to know if there's a max, a maximum, or a minimum. How do we tell if it opens up or down? Do you remember? It is. Yeah, absolutely. If it's opening down, the vertex is the maximum, right? And for it to open down, A has to be negative. For it to open up, the vertex is the minimum, and that's when our A is positive a negative A or a positive A. Okay, so in this particular problem right here, is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? It is a maximum. And what is the maximum value? How high does it go? Nine. I know that the vertex is 4, 9, but when it's asking for the maximum, it wants to know how high it went. It went as high as the y value takes it. Does that make sense? It's also going to ask for the domain. So for this problem, I went ahead and graphed it so we could look at it. It, this is also a way to tell if it's a maximum or minimum if you forget, right? Because you just look at it. Is the vertex the highest point or the lowest point? You see what I'm saying? Okay. The domain, how far left does this go? Forever. And how far right does it go? Forever. So we could either say all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity, right? What about the range? Remember range, we say how far down does it go and how far up does it go? Well, how far down does it go? Forever and how far up does it go? Just to the 9, right? So I can say y is less than or equal to 9, or I can say from negative infinity to 9. Do you have any questions?